So let's take a look at how we process our photo in Corel Draw. I have my photo opened up in Corel, and my first step is to get rid of the background. I typically like to get rid of the background when I'm working on wood or marble or glass. A background in a photograph tends to take the focus away from the individuals or images that we want to basically isolate with our photo. In this case, I've got a black background with the balance beam in the back and I want to get rid of those. Typically, I get rid of any background in photo paint and that's easy to transfer image from Corel Draw to photo paint to make the necessary changes. To do so, I need to come over to my photograph, right click on it and say edit bitmap. By editing the bitmap, it actually opens up in photo paint and allows me now to be able to cut away the background. To do this, I'm going to go up to Image and select Cutout Lab. Now what I want to do is I want to have a nib size. In this case, the nib size is a circle that's on the screen and it's a pretty good size. I notice here that it's set to 100. Uh, if I want, if I go to say 125, I'll get a little bit bigger nib size. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my line here halfway on the photo part that I want to keep and half off of what I want to get rid of. And we're going to go all the way around. So basically what the, the, this tool is doing is it's basically going to take a look at this photograph and it's going to sample the photograph and it's going to keep whatever falls on the inside of the photo, what I've highlighted, and it's going to get rid of what's on the outside of the line here. So I'm just going to typically go along halfway on, I'm across, I'm done. Now Corel Draw needs to know what part of the photo I want to keep and I do that by going to the fill tool and I can either select the outside or the inside. In the case, this case I want to keep the inside so I'm going to click inside and the area that's filled tells the, photograph, tells the software that this is the part of the photograph that I want to keep. So we're going to go to preview and notice that I've got rid of most of the background. Now if I want, you notice here that I've lost some of the photographs, so I'm going to just zoom out a little bit. I'm going to sort of bring some of the detail back that I've lost. So I'm going to click on the Add Detail tool and that's going to allow me just to bring back some of the areas that I have lost. You can see by the transparent background that it's actually disappearing which means now I'm bringing back the full photograph. And you can see I've lost a little bit of her hair here so let's bring that back. Press the H allows me to use the hand tool to move. Let's go back to the add detail. See, I'm bringing back the detail of her body. Notice here I want to get rid of this area here so again I'm going to select this subtract detail and this allows me now to get rid of some of the issues that may happen here and I can add back the detail that came out. So you can see that it's fairly quick that I can actually get rid of the background and any detail that I lose I can easily bring that back. Let's get rid of the bottom of this chair here. That. The H tool. Down to her feet here. And we want to keep this detail. And 
And let's get rid of the, let's put the bottom here. Lost a little bit of the toe here. Let's bring that back. Now we'll move around. There's a little bit more that we've lost. So you can see it's a, it takes a little bit of time to sort of get these edges of the photograph brought back to the way they're supposed to be. That doesn't take that long. And the rewards are gonna be a lot better because now we've gotten rid of that black background, which we really don't wanna have because really I have to invert the image. Because I have to invert the image, I want a nice transparent background. I suggest if you want a little bit more detailed explanation on this tool, I have a couple of good tutorials on my website, Engrave at engrave.ca. Uh, there actually is a good video too, separate video that talks about the Cutout Lab in Corel Draw. So there I've got my image and if I zoom back out again you'll notice now that I've got a good facsimile of just my image and the background's gone. I can click the OK button and my image is processed and then basically all I need to do now is go file save and once I go save, that image goes back to CorelDRAW. So I can close down PhotoPaint, and you'll see I've got my image here now in CorelDRAW. The background is, is transparent, which is perfect. And now all I need to do is to take that photograph and do a couple of processes on it, and we'll get it ready to engrave on the glass. So I need to select the photograph. First thing I'm gonna do is go to Effects, Let's go to Effects, go to Adjust, let's go to Contrast Enhancement. Typically what I want to do on this one here is I want to, uh, let's just reset this. I've got a lot of white here, uh, I've got a little bit of black and I've got sort of an increasing um, amount of gray that happens here. So again, if I pull this slider this way, I'll lighten it up a little bit. Typically I want to lighten it up, I want to get a, a little bit more dark. And again, we can adjust the gamma a little bit here just to sort of shift our, our histogram either left or right, depending on whether you want to darken the image up. You can see that this is the preview here, this is the original image here, and then this is the preview of what our adjustment's gonna be. I like to have a little bit of a lighter image because the, the, the dots that are in, in the photograph um, they'll become a lot bigger in Corel Draw when we are on the laser when we actually etch it on the glass. So I want to sort of generate a little bit more white versus dark uh, areas be between uh, in my image. This tricks my eye into seeing more detail. So all I need to do now is say OK. Let's just bring that up so we can see OK. Sorry, my next is to go to bitmap down to sharpen, unsharp mask. So you can see I've got my image on the right here. On my left is my original image. On my right is my previewed image. Normally on, in the unsharp mask, I want to normally slide the percentage to 500. Let's just zoom in a little bit on that so we can see it. It look, doesn't look as so, um, so bad if we zoom in on it as opposed to when we're zoomed out on it. Normally my radius, I normally want to get that up around you know, or eight or 10. Uh, it's pretty good. I say OK. My next step then is to go to um, my effects, go to transform. I'm going to invert the colors because I want to. I want to sort of do this photograph in a negative, uh, not a positive. So a negative image is the way you want to do it on glass. My next step then is just to go to mode, convert to black and white. I'm going to use either Jarvis Stuckey or Floyd Steinberg. Say OK. There's my image there. And then basically all I need to do now is just send it over to the laser machine. So 
So that's basically all I have to do when I'm converting my image in CorelDRAW to make it ready to laser engrave.